Hey guys, I thought I would try something new today and maybe this will become a series. Let me know what you guys think, but I thought it would be fun to take an idea I saw and really like the look of on Pinterest and try to recreate it myself. Um, and the amount of research I did with for this particular treat was very minimal. I kind of just made it up based on the picture, but for future posts that might vary, like for future videos, um, I don't know what I'd call a series either, inspired by Pinterest, Pinterest inspiration, tried and tested Pinterest, I don't know, something like that. You guys will help me, I'm sure, think of a clever name. Um, but I wanted to do a really quick and easy Valentine treat because it's Valentine's Day tomorrow, and if you're like me, it creeps up on me every year, and I'm like, oh, I better start sending flowers and gifts stat. Um, because I do like celebrating Valentine's Day, not just with my husband, but with my family. I like to send flowers to my loved ones or little tokens in the mail or bake them special treats. And I'm usually scrambling at the last minute because I kind of forget that it's Valentine's Day. Um, so this is a really fun treat. I love Rice Krispies, by the way. Rice Krispie treats, I mean. They're so easy and fast to make and um, you don't need to bake them. The uh, wait time for them after they're done is very small compared to baked goods. Um, and I thought, why not? Like, what's easier than making a Rice Krispie treat? And then I was like, well, probably would look nicer if it was dipped in chocolate. And I was like perusing uh, Pinterest and I saw all these pretty photos. I was like, I can do this. So I just went ahead and, and made it up myself. Now, I'm just using the classic Rice Krispie Kellogg recipe that I've kind of adapted to suit my taste because I like a, a lighter, fluffier um, kind of Rice Krispie treat. I've never made anything like this before, so this whole um, journey that I'm going to share with you is really me trying something for the first time and I just thought that was kind of a fun thing to do. Um, but I really like the way they turned out. They turned out really cute. I packaged them up really cute to give away too. And um, they're just, they were easy. I learned a few things along the way and I will share my tips with you in this video. Um, but if you're interested in this series, I would love, love to know. Without further ado, let's get into the super easy recipe and you can see uh, what worked for me and what didn't when I took inspiration just from a Pinterest photo. For this recipe, you will need Rice Krispies. You could use Kellogg's brand or another brand, whatever you prefer. I like to do a mixture of cocoa and original flavor. Um, I do half and half, so I use three cups of each. You will need marshmallows, either 10 ounces of regular marshmallows or four cups of mini marshmallows. I like the mini marshmallows. I think they melt a little bit more evenly three to four tablespoons of unsalted butter, and a pot. I like to use a large stock pot um, to melt and combine everything. I just think it gives me better leverage. Um, you'll also need a rubber spatula and a Pyrex dish, as well as cooking spray, a nonstick spray, to make sure that your Rice Krispie treats come out easily. I use canola oil spray. If you're going to make the chocolate dip portion, you'll need whatever chocolate of your choice. I'm using this chocolate by Cho. I'm going to do a combination of their dark chocolate and milk chocolate discs to make sort of more of a semi-sweet experience. Um, I like disc chocolate for melting. I find it really easy. I prefer to melt my chocolate in a double boiler. You could also use a glass bowl over a pot of boiling water or do it in the microwave on a lower power setting in increments of 30 seconds and stir. Um, I just prefer to use the double boiler method. And then um, if you're going to go ahead and decorate those, you'll need sprinkles for decoration, as well as a cookie cutter to make out the shapes. I'm using the heart shape cutter. And then I'm also kind of amping up with some popsicle sticks and um, little cellophane bags to put them in at the end um, to make them like really cute packaged treats. And those are all of the ingredients you will need. Before I start cooking anything, I like to prep by measuring out my Rice Krispies so I don't have to measure that out. I can immediately put them into the pot after it comes off the heat. And I like to spray down my Pyrex dish. This is a 9x13 Pyrex dish. It's hard to see now because it's been sitting for a minute, but it's completely coated in spray. And I've just been using this canola spray oil that I like. It's completely covered in it. And I keep the spray at the ready for the spatula if I need it when I'm spreading it out out the um, Rice Krispie batter. I'm just going to put this to the side and we'll go start cooking. So I'm going to start by turning my stove on to medium-low heat. So on my stove that's about two and a half. 
and I'm gonna pop in just over the three, the, the traditional recipe from Kellogg's Rice Krispies is three tablespoons of butter. I use probably three and a half. I think just a little bit more butter and a little bit more marshmallows makes for a fluffier and lighter and less dense um, Rice Krispie treat and that's, that's what I prefer. So we're just gonna let this melt down and once it's melted, we will add in our marshmallows. This is this is very easy. I love I love Rice Krispie treats because you can just make them so quickly and you don't have to bake them and it is yummy for everybody. Gluten free treat as well. Okay, now that that's done, I'm gonna add in my marshmallows. As you can see, this is a four cup measuring cup and I have stuffed it to the brim so it's at least five, maybe five and a half cups of marshmallows. Like I said, that's just the way I prefer them. My family likes them that way too. And also, I just find it is a way easier to melt the marshmallows, the mini marshmallows, than the full-size ones. I just feel like they melt a little bit more evenly and a little bit quickly, more quickly. Um, and I just stir them to get them all coated in the butter so I don't have any issues with sticking with my spatula. And you just wanna keep stirring this because you don't want the marshmallow to burn. That's why you do it over a medium-low heat and not high heat because you don't know nobody wants burned marshmallows and as soon as it's completely completely melted i'm going to take it off the uh stove and i'm going to add in the rice krispies so i will um, meet you guys at that stage but i just like to keep mixing it because i just feel like it melts a little bit more evenly and it only takes a few minutes all right, so I just pulled this off of the stove. You want to do this right away when it's hot before it starts cooling. You can see there's no lumps left from the uh, marshmallows. It literally just took a few minutes. And here I have the Rice Krispies. It's half and half. I don't know if you guys are going to see. I have three cups of uh, Cocoa Krispies and three cups of regular plain Rice Krispies. I'm going to dump those all in and start stirring right away. The longer you wait, the harder it gets. Just trying to get under it to get even coating because a lot of the marshmallow will stick to the bottom so you don't want to break all of your crispies so I like using the rubber spatula for that purpose I just feel like it's a little bit gentler than a wooden spoon and just some basic elbow grease we'll get this pulled out in a minute once you feel it's pretty evenly mixed pull over your pre-greased um, Pyrex dish, and this is the fun part, trying to get it out of the pan. I just kind of uh, manhandle it <laughs> uh, to get as much out as possible. But one of the benefits of making the Rice Krispie Treats is that you get to um, clean the bowl. I mean the pan, the pot, <laughs> whatever this is called. And by clean it out, I mean eat it, obviously. I mean, that kind of goes without saying, but try to get as much out as possible. So don't waste any. Although, like I said, eating it means you're not wasting it. Now, at this point, you might want to spray your spatula again. I don't really think I need to. And I'm just going to kind of mush it into the edges of the pan. So it molds out nice. Um, I don't push it down too far. Again, I just like kind of a lighter, airier Rice Krispie treat than a really dense one. That's really a personal preference thing. Um, but the mixture of the cocoa and the regular Rice Krispies is key. You can see, get to taste that part. Mm -mm -mm. Now. Kellogg says to wait a full hour to let this cool. I don't think you need a full hour. Maybe about 30 minutes. Depends how hot it is in your kitchen. I'm going to put this aside and work on the chocolate for the dipping. Now, while the Rice Krispies are cooling, I am bringing up the heat on my double boiler. So I just have this pot that I have. But like I said, you could definitely just use a small pot like this with about an inch and a half or so of water in it in a glass bowl and do it that way. I just happen to have this ceramic double boiler, which I love. Um, but you don't need it, and you could even do it in the microwave. This is just how I prefer to do it. I'm bringing the water up in temperature, so it's at a low simmer. I have it on three. We're not quite there yet, so it isn't quite warmed up yet. 
Once it's warmed up, we're gonna add our chocolate. Now I'm using these Cho chocolate discs, like I mentioned. Um, these are really good baking chocolates. Um, Disc-like chocolate like this melts a lot more quickly and more evenly than even chips or cut chocolate unless you cut it really fine. Um, but if you wanna take some of the work out of it, there's this. You can use chocolate chips, you can use any kind of chocolate you want. Um, any level of chocolate you want, milk to dark. Uh, I'm combining them to make sort of a, an in-betweeny stage. Uh, so once that comes up to temperature, and it's very, very close, we will start melting the chocolate. And this technique is basically to avoid burning or overcooking the chocolate, which is a very easy thing to do. So if you're gonna use the microwave, I recommend doing it on a half level of power, so 50% power in 30 second intervals and stirring in between each interval until it's just melted and then pull it out and mix, mix, mix until it's all the way melted. Um, so let's get this started. I'm just gonna eyeball this. I'm not, you know, measuring this out or anything. I wanna make enough that I can dip, so it's gonna have to be quite a bit. The key to melting chocolate without burning is to just stir it on a consistent basis. Um, you don't have to stir it the whole time. I generally keep an eye, close eye on it because I don't want it to burn. If it gets overcooked, it gets kind of hard and almost paste-like. And we want this to be creamy and smooth and easy for dipping and drizzling. Now you can see we're almost at the finish line. I reduced the temperature on the stove just a bit down to two, which is medium low low I guess just to make sure I'm not burning anything and I am now constantly stirring to make sure of that as well and also to get rid of all of the last uncompletely melted pieces so they will um uncompletely melted is a technical term by the way you can use that um I'm <laughs> just kidding so this is practically done I think in just another 30 seconds here and all of these will be little last remaining chunks will be melted in and it will be smooth and liquidy like this and perfect for dipping. Before I pull the chocolate over you can see I set up some wax paper on the counter here. I'm just going to pop my Rice Krispie um, batter I guess we'll call it um, because I so well greased this it just came right out as you can see and it is ready to be cut so I'm just gonna go get my chocolate because I want it to cool over here um, but at the ready I have my cutting my heart-shaped um, cookie cutter my spray and my sprinkles so I'm all ready to go I've also pre-prepared a jelly roll pan that I put a uh, grated you know, like a drying rack on, a great, a mesh drying, not mesh, a grated drying rack. And underneath that, I have put another piece of wax paper to catch any chocolate dripping and make cleanup easier. So I've pulled over my chocolate. It's kind of out of frame right now, but I have it at the ready, and I'm just keeping it in the pot with the still hot water in it while I work on cutting my Rice Krispies in the shape. So I'm gonna take my uh, cookie cutter over to the sink to do this so I don't get canola spray all over the place. You're gonna very well coat both inside and out of the ring uh, with spray. You might need to redo that depending on how sticky your Krispies are. And I'm just gonna start cutting out shapes. Now, like I said, I did not let this go the whole um, hour. It was probably only about half an hour or less. And I'm just trying to maximize um, my area here, but also do this quickly so my chocolate doesn't cool. This kind of, this part is a little bit more time sensitive. And the scraps I'm pulling over. Those scraps will not go to waste, mind you. They will be eaten. <laughs> so no worries about that. Whatever you do with your scraps, if you can come up with some clever ideas on how to use them, maybe make something fun with your kids. Um, please share. I'd love to know. Let's see, maybe we can flatten this last bit out just a little bit and make a bit of a smaller one. And by smaller, I mean less thick, but not waste any. 
Uh, like I said, these scraps aren't going to waste, but you know, have an extra heart. So I was able to make, let's see how many hearts did I make? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, a dozen hearts. And I'm going to put these scraps in a safe place for future consumption. Now we are ready to dip, and there are several options when dipping here. You can drizzle, you can dip so just the bottom is covered in chocolate, you can dip the whole thing. Now it kind of depends on how much chocolate you made. I made a lot. I kind of want to dip them in half. I don't have any sort of fancy way to dry them where it's not going to be uh, on a rack, touching the rack. Chocolate's going to touch the rack, which is going to leave an indent. So what I'm going to try to do is air dry, if you will, um, briefly um, after dipping. So after some initial experimenting, I have found it's better to not put the stick in until later. So. What I want to do is I want to dip my as many of my um, Rice Krispie hearts into chocolate as possible, um, but I'm limited by how much chocolate I have, so I want to start dipping first. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and dip. You don't want to like sit it in the chocolate for too long because it's hot and it makes the Rice Krispie treat kind of melt. Um, we're just going to kind of drip that over, and then as it starts to harden a little bit. I'm going to take the sprinkles I want to decorate with. You want to get these on while the chocolate is still melted because then they stick when it dries or hardens I should say and plop that down. And that one. Now like I said these aren't going to look completely professional because I don't have a way to dry them without having the rack but I think they look really nice. For my last three hearts, I don't quite have enough chocolate left to submerge them in half. So what I thought I'd do is I dip the back half and then drizzle on top. So I'm just dipping them in about halfway, and I'm going to let that drip off for a little bit. So you can see the back is coated in chocolate. And now I want to do a little drizzle on top. Again, not a professional here, so we'll see how this turns out. I'm just going to take a little of the chocolate on my um, spatula. Now it's cool enough that it's not coming off so fast. Lessons in trying to do things you've never done before. Practice first, then make a video. Well, it's made with love. Let's just say that. <laughs> it's a modern drizzle, okay? That's what we're going for here. Modern drizzle. And finish off with some non -pareils. So now I've got my decorated hearts. No, they don't look professional, but they do look like you put time and effort into them. And I bet they're scrumptious. I'm going to pop these into the fridge for about, I think about 20 to 30 minutes uh, to get the chocolate to harden up so I can put the sticks in and package them. There's a little bit of leftover chocolate here. Perfect for dipping strawberries in or other berries or for drizzling over chocolate sundae. I mean an ice cream sundae. I don't know why it's a chocolate sundae. Um, there are ways to use this chocolate. Do not let it go to waste. So about halfway through the chilling process, I decided it was a terrible idea to put them on the wire rack because they would stick and I pulled them out. They're about halfway hardened now, you can see. And I was right, they did stick. So I took them, I took the wire rack off and I would I gently pushed up from underneath to release them. I think in the future I would just put them directly onto the sheet with the wax paper. I didn't want them to pool. Um, so maybe the combination worked. I honestly don't know. You guys know this is a learning experience. So I'm gonna put it back in the fridge now to cool, but now they are all off the sheet, which makes me feel better. <laughs> so let's continue cooling. Okay, so I have just pulled these out of the fridge. It's been about 30 minutes and they're pretty much all set. And um, I learned my lesson with the wire rack. Won't be doing that again, but my idea was that I wouldn't pull that way. It ended up working out fine. There's just a little bit of a, a like a great imprint on the bottom of them. 
but I don't think it's a bad it's a bad thing. And I've decided to ditch the um, popsicle stick idea. Popsicle stick. Well, these are like lollipop sticks because I just think to get the pop part to like the stick part to go up through the chocolate, I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> I've done enough experimenting today, so I think I'm just going to package them up individually in little cellophane bags with a nice ribbon. So I'm just going to pop one in. Like so. And then, got some curling ribbon here, pink and red. And, let's see. There, I think that's sweet. I think that's really sweet. I'm gonna pack them all up and I'll show you guys what they look like. So here's the final result. I think these are my best ones to be honest, but I think they came out pretty good for just flying by the seat of my pants and really making it up as I went along with just a Pinterest picture to guide me. Um, here you can see them all wrapped up. I think they're so cute, make such cute, really thoughtful, handmade little Valentine treats. And I can't wait to give them to my family and friends. As you can see, for the most part, I believe that my recipe turned out pretty well. Um, they look pretty good. I mean, I've never really made anything like this. Like I said, I've made chocolate dipped strawberries, but that's about the extent of my chocolate dipping experience. Um, and I was pretty pleased. I learned about dipping and I learned about not putting things on the wire rack to cool, although I was able to salvage them. I think in the future I would just put it on wax paper. Um, I also learned that I didn't have to go and make them into a, like, lollipop. Like, that was going to be too complicated. So I simplified along the way my plan and adapted. And I don't know, do you guys think these are Pinterest worthy? Maybe after a few more tries, I think. Um, I'm pretty close. But I really think they're really cute and sweet and quick, relatively, um, relatively quick treat to make for your loved ones in a, in a pinch. Um, because like I said, the Rice Krispies are easy to make, the chocolates, it's easy, it's all easy steps, and it only takes a couple of hours really when all is said and done, but that's not, you're not working for two hours straight to get them done, but, um, Dipping them in chocolate and decorating them makes them look like you put so much time and effort and thought into it and that just kind of amps up your Rice Krispie Treat game. Um, plus Rice Krispie Treats are a gluten-free treat um, and I know that some of my family members really appreciate that so that's something to take into consideration as well. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy this. Let me know if you're interested in the series. I'm, I love like looking at Pinterest for craft ideas and stuff, but I never try them because I'm like, oh, that'll never look good when I do it. But it might be fun if we try these things together. Like, why not? Why not try and see how Pinterest worthy we can get our Pinterest attempts, our Pinterest um, inspiration attempts, I should say. Uh, so yeah, I thought this would be fun. There's a couple other kind of fun uh, projects I already have my eye on. So if you guys are interested, I'd love to make this into a series. Let's think of a cute name for it. I'll, I'll work on it in my brain, but if you guys can work on it in your brains too, that would be great. And um, happy, happy Valentine's Day. I am running a giveaway on my um, social media right now on Instagram and Twitter. So you can check that out if you want. My um, links for those are below. And I hope you have a wonderful, love-filled, happy Valentine's Day. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.